Greetings everyone. In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating two techniques for performing DLL injection on Windows. And in order to effectively demonstrate these, I first need to briefly explain what they are. So here you'll find an excerpt from my lecture on this topic for the course that I teach at George Mason University. So regular DLL injection is a standard Windows technique using completely legitimate Win32 API calls. And what it allows a process to do is to load a DLL or a dynamically linked library into the process memory space of another process. And the way it works is like so. You have two things. You have the injector process, which as the name suggests is the process doing the injecting, and then the host process, which is the process that will receive the DLL. So in the first stage, the injector attaches to the host process by calling the Win32 function open process, which essentially gets a handle to the host process. The second thing it does is it allocates memory in the host process by calling virtual alloc ex. So this gray blob here represents allocated memory. The second thing it does is it copies the DLL to the host process using a function called write process memory. So now in this stage, the DLL is loaded into the allocated memory. And finally, in the fourth stage, it executes the code in the DLL in the host process by calling create remote thread. And so now the code in the DLL has been executed. So that's regular DLL injection. The second technique I want to demonstrate is called reflective DLL injection, which, although semi-legitimate in the sense that it uses Win32 API calls, is somewhat an abuse of how DLL injection is supposed to happen, and the purpose of it is increased stealth. So in reflective DLL injection, this is a variant of DLL injection where the DLL loads itself from RAM without necessarily touching the hard drive. And this has significant security benefits, which are outside the scope of this demonstration. So the general methodology is it gets the handle of the process that it wants to inject itself into and allocates memory in that process and then copy the first copy the, the full DLL to it. So these first two stages are basically the same thing as the previous version of DLL injection. However, instead of just copying the path to the DLL, uh, which occurs in this stage, it actually copies the entire contents of the DLL. Then it recalls a function, which in this case I'm calling reflective loader, but really is any function in the DLL that handles the reflective loading functionality. What this function does is it first must find the location of itself, it must find itself, as well as locations of the load library function, get proc address, and virtual alloc functions, which are all in kernel32.dll. And there are very standard techniques for doing this. There's nothing nefarious about this. It will then allocate a new segment of memory into the host process and load its own image into it. So this is the actual official load of the library. Essentially what it means is the host process is going to have two complete copies of the DLL. The first being the sort of bootstrap and the second being the actually loaded image. The reflective loader function will then call the DLL main function of the loaded DLL with a flag called DLL process attach. The DLL main function in a DLL is just like the main function in a binary. It is the default code that executes when the DLL is started or when the binary is executed. Excuse me. So what is the purpose of all of this? Well, for two things. For one, the DLL never resides on the disk, and thus it is harder to detect via security tools or disk-based forensics. And then secondly, as I'm going to demonstrate, the DLL is never officially registered with the operating system. Thus, it does not exist in the process execution block of the host process, thus again leading to increased stealth. So OK, with that all out of the way, let's get into actually demoing what this looks like in Windows. Now all the tools that I'm going to be using for this demo are included in a link in the video description. So if you open it up, you'll see two folders, x86 and x86. Obviously, you will want to choose the one that matches the version of Windows that you're going to use. For this demo, I'm going to be using Windows 10 64-bit, but this will work on any modern version of Windows. Again, just choose the correct folder. So here I have my Windows 10 VM. I have my x64 folder because this is Windows 10 64-bit, and I have a few files here. What you're going to want to do is move these files into the root of C. You're then going to need a process to inject into, I'm going to use Notepad++, like so. It doesn't matter, you can use whatever you want. You're then going to need a command prompt to actually run this, and you're going to want to navigate to the root of C. 
Now, there are four things here. There is inject and NC loader, which are the two binaries that are going to perform the actual injection. There is process explorer, which I'm going to go ahead and run now. And the purpose of this is to show the actual injection. And then there is the DLL I'm going to inject, which is this reflective DLL64.dll. So in Process Explorer, the default view might not have this lower pane here, which we're going to need. So if I mouse over my process, which is Notepad++, you'll see that here I have all the DLLs. If you don't see this, you're going to want to go to View and then make sure Show Lower Pane is checked. And then under Lower Pane View, make sure DLLs is checked. And then you should see the same thing here. You might see different DLLs if you're using a different binary, but the same thing will work. So here you can see all the DLLs loaded by Notepad++. OK. So now let us actually do this. Oh, I'm also going to need the PID, or the process ID of Notepad++, which is 3372. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show regular injection. To do that, I'm going to use NC loader. I need my PID, 3372. And then I need the full path to the DLL, which is just going to be this reflective DLL. Okay, I'm going to run this here, and you'll notice I get hello from DLL main. So what this tells us is that the DLL has successfully been loaded, and the code from DLL main has successfully been executed. This error is irrelevant. You can go ahead and ignore that. So now if I go back to Process Explorer and I look at Notepad++, if I scroll down to R here, I see my reflective DLL. 64.dll. It shows up officially in Process Explorer. It is officially loaded using standard Microsoft methodology. Cool. So now let's check out reflective injection. In order to do that, I first need to kill Notepad++ and then restart it. This will change the PID. So now it is 260 and you'll see that my DLL is no longer there because the injection was temporary. Okay, so now I'm going to use inject, and here this is hard-coded to use the reflective DLL. I can't use anything else, so all you need to provide is the PID, which is 260, and when I run that, you'll notice that again, I get hello from DLL main, so the DLL again was successfully loaded and executed. And if I go to Process Explorer here, you will find that I do not, in fact, see reflective 64dll.dll in the process list. And that is the advantage of reflective DLL injection. It does not show up. It is not officially registered and thus is hidden from anyone looking for rogue DLLs loaded into a legitimate process. And that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching.